Hello, I'm Kristen and I am going to talk to you all about dating a cop today and this is kind of the basics video. I'm going to have a series of three videos so check out the other ones. Um, they will be posted week by week so if you're watching this later they should already be up and I will have a playlist linked below with all those videos. So if you are dating a cop this is the video for you. I've been a police wife for nine years and I dated my officer for 10 years on and off before that. So I definitely have some dating years in under my belt and I'm excited to give you the basics about dating a cop today. I also have an Instagram at Hills and Holster and I have a police wife devotional with 42 stories of my own personal um, dating life with my officer and also police wife life and Bible verses and prayers in there. Um, and I will link that below if you're interested. It really can um, goes over a lot of the topics and themes that I see are really common among us police girlfriends and wives. And I have had my Instagram for two years now and um, have over 7,000 people in that community of wives. And it is so amazing. So go check us out over there. Okay. So the very first thing that is really important as a police girlfriend is that you support your officer. So I remember specifically when Rick and I were still dating, he told me, I really need you to support my career. And he was a police officer then. And I, my background's social work. So I come from a liberal background. Um, we work with officers a lot, but we don't necessarily like are really openly supportive of them. Rick's dad was a cop and I still remember um, like the first time hearing because he was injured on the job and I heard about that like when we were very early on dating I was over at dinner at his parents house and I tell that story in my book as the very first story because I really didn't know anything about law enforcement before him. Um, so Rick tells me this and I tell him okay, I think I can like support your career. And he tells me, um, can you just support it for five years? Like I just need five good years. And what he meant by that is that he really wanted to go hard, like really work and prioritize. They do prioritize their career a lot. And that's something that you need to acknowledge if you're going to date a cop. Um, and I said, yeah, I can support it for five years. That's totally fine. I think we got married like a year or two after that. Um, and I've been supporting him now for nine years. He's still in the career. And I didn't really know what I was getting myself into when I answered that question. Um, what I have learned now is that it's really important to offer a safe and non-judgmental space. So things that they do are a lot different than anything we see on TV. Um, I remember thinking like police just stand around a lot. Like you see that like in the movies, the detectives are just like standing around a lot they're running, like they're actually running a lot and they're not like sitting in their cars a lot if they are a street cop, which um, my husband has been mostly, he works in Los Angeles, in the city of Los Angeles, and he has been mostly street cop in gang units and they are out on the streets a lot, walking and running around. So they are very different than what we see. Um, the second thing around this kind of support topic is that you accommodate your spouses or your boyfriends unique needs. So this is going to be different for everyone, but I joke on my Instagram about how there are places that Rick will not go. There are things that he sees differently than me. So for example, there's this really like kind of cute, like I should say kind of like, um, it looks like a family owned Mexican restaurant and I really wanted to go there. And Rick was like, yeah, there's always cars there late at night. And I'm pretty sure it's like there's prostitution going on there. So I don't really want to go there. And I was like, what? Like, it just is totally, it's like in the middle of a suburb, in the middle of a community. And I'm like, okay, how? But he just sees the world differently and that's fine. Like we'll find a different Mexican place to go. It's totally fine. I love Mexican food. So, um, so that's just an example of one thing, but there's a lot of other things that will come up for you. Um, maybe they don't like, your boyfriend doesn't like crowded spaces. So um, Rick, doesn't either and I really like when we go to theme parks or, or do something fun as a family or if you guys are going to go on a date like to a concert just be aware that like he might want to have like the VIP space or we try to go like on the off season to theme parks so that it's not as crowded. Um, the last thing is to defend your spouse against haters or at least acknowledge that there's places and spaces that he doesn't want to be um, and that took me time to learn. I have to be honest, like 
I was talking to Rick when I was writing the devotional about like, what are those gross moments in our marriage um, for you? And this was when we were still dating. We weren't married. I think we were engaged at this time. Um, and we were going to go get a new car. Like his car was a ton of miles. We needed a new car. And he's like, so he gives me a heads up when we're driving there. And he's like, I'm going to tell them I work for the city. And I've seen him do that before. And I would give him a hard time. And I'd be like, why do you do that? Just say you're a cop. Like, why do you just say you work for the city? And he was like, I'm going to tell him that. Like, I just don't want to deal with it today. And then we ended up getting in an argument over it. Cause I was like, no, you should be proud. Like, I love what you do. And I just didn't get it. I didn't get it that at work, he gets a lot of hate all day and he doesn't want to deal with that when he's not there. Um, he just wants to be like a normal person. So saying that he just works for like the government job or whatever is easier. And it took me a long time to really get that. Honestly, I really didn't fully get it. And when we were dating, um, a bad like shooting incident happened in LA. And I remember looking up on the news, what was happening and seeing like all the hate comments. And that was my first time really seeing it. And then really when the Black Lives Matter movement increased, heightened these last couple years, like I, I felt the hate towards me. Um, and so it took me time to really see that. Um, and I think it's just important to remember and acknowledge that they won't want to do certain things or be around certain people. And I don't expect you to like defend them in every comment that's ever made. I don't think that's appropriate for you and for, for me. Um, I think we are, have to pick and choose who we do um, respond to if they're making a comment. For me, if it's on social media, I just block them. I don't care if you're family, I will just block you. <laughs> like, or there's a way to like mute accounts or something. Like, I don't want to see that if that's like they're talking about it a lot. It's just not something that you need to see or your spouse needs to see. And then same thing with friends, family, coworkers. Like, I will just try to distance myself as much as possible if they are talking bad about police. Um, because my husband doesn't need that and neither do I around me. Um, okay, the next big theme is schedules. So um, your spouse will most likely be a shift worker. I don't really know what that meant, but in shift work life, when you are dating a cop, you will see um, that there is unexpected schedules. So for example, Rick gets a new schedule every four weeks. The four weeks do not correspond with the calendar months. So we might get a new four week that starts like the third week of October or November or something like that. And that's a blast. And we don't know what the next four weeks going to look like. He does not have a generally like same days that he works each week. Um, so what happened for us is that he would email me his schedule. I think we started doing this after, well, maybe when we we're still dating. Because after a while, I realized like I would just like to know what it looks like. So because he just would live like day by day and that did not work for my mind. Like I needed to know are you, and it really helped me to be honest to kind of anticipate something. So if he would email it to me, I put it in my phone calendar. Like this is the days he's working and I could see ahead of time like, okay, this next four week period, he's going to be working like all the weekends. So I need to find something else to do. And that really helped my independence and my happiness in our relationship to just kind of anticipate when he was working and be able to like schedule time with friends or family on some weekends. I wasn't just like alone all weekend. And then also know that maybe we can squeeze in some dates at some weird times. It might be a morning if he's working like at, um, Rick worked a lot of swing shifts. So like 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. And sometimes he's worked nights um, as well. So you might have like a breakfast date and that's okay too. And then the other wives, they talk about like having a date in the middle of the shift where they'll like bring their spouse a lunch and eat in the car. I don't do that because Rick works quite far away from where we are. So we visit him like once or twice a year, honestly, at work. So we don't go that much. Um, so try to expect the unexpected as much as you can. Um, it's good to have like it in your mind, the lowest expectations you can have. So for example, if you are planning like a date or I've planned like double dates with Rick and his best friend and he just got married. So exciting to, um, to a friend of mine. Um, but I planned, for example, a date with us, the four of us and our kids, and we're going to go to this concert. So kind of like a family time, but also like, I definitely thought Rick would be there and I told Rick to take the day off. And apparently he was scheduled to work that day. Like after he asked for the day off, I don't know if he didn't get it. And I just like thought he did, but we found out the week of the concert that he was working that Saturday or Friday or whatever it was. 
So I went alone, I went alone and I hung out with my kids and it was totally fine. It would have been more awkward without the kids, I think. Um, but it, it's okay to still go and experience things. And I almost always think in my head now, anything we're gonna do, whether it's something like that where we're going out with our family, um, but I plan on like, I can still go alone and I only plan things I would be willing to go alone to. There's some things that maybe I wouldn't if it's a really special thing and it was just us going and like maybe I wouldn't go to a concert alone or I could invite a friend if he got scheduled or something like that. But it's important to have that independence and just know that that's part of this life. And I really want you to wrap your mind around that pride um, and, and change that narrative. So sometimes people are really negative about that. So like maybe you think um, that it's awful. That I used to be like obsessed with this schedule, like, oh, it's so awful, but it's a part of this life. And just embracing that will solve so many headaches for you. And also the pride around that, that your spouse works this crazy schedule because that's what your city or your county or your community needs of him. And you are a part of this. You create this amazing life for your, your boyfriend, um, and to be happy and enjoy life outside of work, right? And so you create this safe, happy space for him and just remember that and have pride around that, okay? So even though it can be frustrating, try to just be like, okay, that's a part of this life and I am a part of this life and you are, you're a critical piece of this life of police work as well. Um, so I already kind of talked about being alone on weekends and holidays. Um, the next thing that you can definitely see if you go on my Instagram page is a dark sense of humor. So I knew Rick before he was a cop. He did not joke about the same things he does now back then. So I do believe um, when you're dating a cop, if you're dating him while he's becoming a police officer, it, you will see a change in that sense of humor. That is a part of resilience, okay? So they see a lot of dark stuff that the rest of the world does not see. And especially I see it when Rick is around his coworkers, like his besties, he's had these same two besties for like 16 years since he was in the academy, no joke. Like, and not that many more friends after that, just like acquaintances. But when he's around them, he, he has a lot, they just joke together a lot. And you might feel like, the third wheel, like you don't get it. Um, I don't get it a lot, but I've definitely increased my dark sense of humor and you would see that on Instagram and using humor and joking in a safe space where you're not gonna judge him is so important. So try not to, and sometimes Rick will push it too far and I'll tell him and I'm like, you gotta just do that with your coworkers. But in general, we are kind of like, I have a dark sense of humor even in our family. It's just a part of us. Okay. The next thing is that your your boyfriend might be kind of controlling. So I wanna clarify this. I'm using this word because I don't know how else to describe it, but there are certain things that he might want you to do for safety because he cares about your safety. And again, he sees the world from like this different perspective. So I'm gonna share an example to clarify what I mean and what I think is acceptable. And there's stuff that would not be acceptable for me. Um, so when Rick and I, I was, we were already married at this point, but it could have happened before this as well. So we were living together and I wanted to go on a jog. I had just had Maverick, our first baby, and I got a jogging stroller. Like I was like this, I'm gonna work out with my baby. We lived off of like kind of a main road and then near us was like this cute little downtown area, but it was kind of like up and coming, like it was being gentrified. It was like older, anyway. and. So I tell Rick one day, like nonchalantly, like, oh, I got approval from the doctor. I'm going to start jogging with Maverick. And he's like, oh, okay, that's great. And then the next day he comes home and he's like, so I was thinking about how you're going to go jogging. And <clears throat> he drew me a map and he was like, this is where you can go, like go down this road and go this way. And I was like, oh, I was going to go to like the little downtown area over here. Why do you want me to go this way? And he's like, I knew you'd want to go to the downtown area. Like there's a lot of like crime and there's a lot of stuff going on over there. So I wouldn't go that way. And I was like, oh, okay. And it seems kind of weird. You know, at first, I think if they're doing something because they truly do care about you, it's okay. I think you can also push back a little if it seems like it's too much for you and this is something that's really important to you. Because if that was really important to me, maybe he would tell me like have pepper spray on me or something like that, I don't know. But um, so just remember, 
to try to ask them, like clarify, why are they asking you to do something that seems maybe kind of controlling? Try to understand where they're coming from. And then if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can push back and you can say like, this is really important to me. Is there another way? Like, can we compromise here or something like that? Um, I think that police work, like being a cop, it, it makes them more aware, keenly aware of what's going on in our communities and they want to keep you safe. You're really important to them. So, um, the next thing that's really important is loyalty and respect and trust. So these are things that are like a part of being a law enforcement officer. And, um, I trust Rick, like that was never an issue. I'm going to have my next video on, um, dating a cop who is undercover or has a female partner because these are really common things that like come up on my Instagram page and I wanted to address it. If you were early on in a relationship, like how do you deal with that? And I will share my own stories on like how I've dealt with that. Trust was never an issue, but I do think I'll talk about my next video, like communication and boundaries are really important in that work. Um, but I know for Rick, like if at all, if at all I question him and his intentions, like he's like personally offended because he is a very loyal person and he expects me to be very loyal as well. I do want to mention um, one last thing before I end, and that is that traditional values do seem like a really consistent theme that um, when you're dating a cop that they are looking for. So if you are kind of wondering what it's like to date a cop because they are working so much, so many hours outside the home, it's really important for them to have a partner that can also kind of be in the home and be that opposite. Um, so I work and Rick has always really supported my career too, but I'm so blessed to have like a teacher schedule and professor. So I'm able to be mostly be able to drop my kids off and pick them up from school. And like, I am the kind of default person that they would call. And I love doing that. And I cook almost every meal in the home and I clean my home. It's not perfectly clean all the time, but so, um, that's something to consider. And I have heard from other wives, other police wives that like they wanted to be a stay at home mom and they knew like coming when they were starting their relationship, like they were really clear about that to the person they were dating, the cop they were dating. So it's okay to be clear with your intentions if that's something you're interested. If you are a working parent or working working person, working woman, then um, I think that's totally fine because I work. If you have a traditional like nine to five or you're going eight to six, it's just something to consider as you are getting more serious in the relationship that it's a lot to juggle. Two full-time careers is a lot to juggle, but people do it. Um, yeah, it's just, if you intend to keep your career forever, I just think being clear with your um, officer that you're dating about that and making sure that they support you, if that's what's important to you, is really important because I do think it's a pretty common theme to see a lot of stay-at-home um, wives and moms and in this work, um, in this in this life, I should say. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my book. Um, it's Heels and Holsters, a police wife devotional. And also I have a blog, www.heelsandholster.com. And then also my Instagram page. I would love to see you over there and join my supportive community. We ask like questions, um, wives will ask questions. And then I will ask everyone in my stories and then um, people respond. Like a lot of people respond and give their own tips because it's not just about me. What I know, I know I don't know everything and I want to make sure like this is a community. So have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.